In this video, we'll be taking a look at virtual memory. Virtual memory is used to make programmers believe that they have more memory than they do in reality. And the way it works is that a certain amount of your secondary storage, whether that is a hard disk drive or an SSD, will be put off to the side and reserved and uh, treated as if it were RAM. And so basically the way it works is, let's say we have a 32-bit address. Well, the offset is going to represent the size of pages. And so basically what a page is, is it's a collection of, that was really off to the side. All right, so let's say this is memory. A page is a group of addresses and their contents. And the reason why we do that is because uh, we wanna take advantage of spatial locality and going out to secondary storage is very, very expensive in terms of clock cycles. If you go out to secondary storage, your CPU will end up having to await lot, a lot longer than it would otherwise um, if you accessed RAM. And so if we had a four kilobyte page size, well then we would get two to the two times two to the 10, which gives us two to the 12. And we look at the exponent here, which gives us 12 bits. And then as you can see here, the virtual page number versus the physical page number, the virtual page number has two additional bits, which means that the virtual memory is four times larger than the actual physical memory. And for example, let's say I opened up my control panel here and went into systems, uh, advanced settings under performance. You can see right here that on my computer, I have a bit more than a gigabyte allocated for virtual memory. And this, you could change this manually. Um, the optimal size will depend on the specs of your computer. Now, because page faults or page misses are so expensive because you have to go out to secondary storage, we use a fully associative approach because it minimizes page faults because pages can go anywhere they want. Now, the problem with that is that since pages can go anywhere they want, if we want to find the page, well, then we would have to search through all the possible um, locations. And so instead, we use an abstraction called a page table. And this page table is actually stored in main memory. In fact, every single process has its own page table. And basically the page table will just index a virtual page number to a physical page number. And so let's say we have a 32-bit address and we have four kilobyte pages, which means our offset is 12 bits, which means that our virtual page number is 20 bits. Well, we would have two to the 20 entries in our page table. And at every one of those entries, we may or may not have a physical page number. And so um, initially, all the valid bits will be zero. But then when we miss and we load a page into main memory, well, we're gonna go ahead and 
change this valid bit to a one. And we're going to put the physical address in this location right here. And the idea is that you can find the page rather quickly given the virtual page number. Because the page table is stored in main memory, we end up having to go out to main memory twice whenever we need to access memory. Once to retrieve the physical address, and then the second time to actually get the data. And so some people came up with what's called a translation look aside buffer. And essentially, it's a physical piece of hardware. So it's kind of like a cache, but for translations. And the idea is that given a virtual page number, it would check to see if it matched the tag. And if it did, then it would return the physical page number to the processor. And so they, could, they would only have to go out to main memory once. And it works a lot like cache in that it only contains a subset of all the locations in the page table. So again, the page table will have a number of entries corresponding to the number of virtual page numbers. But for a TLB, it would be less than that. And I guess it's worth noting that uh, I drew an extra bit here called the dirty bit. And because it's so expensive to go out to secondary storage, whenever we write to a page, when we modify the data, we use what's called a write back scheme. And in the write back scheme, we only write the page back into secondary storage when it needs to be swapped out. This is as opposed to um, going to modify the page in secondary storage because you want the two to be consistent. And so if we end up having to swap out a page and the dirty bit is zero, well, that tells us that it never actually changed and it's already stored in secondary storage. And so we wouldn't have to do the write back at all. We could just replace the page. 